If there is one topic that pretty much drove the internet nuts over the past few weeks, it would be GPT. Particularly ChatGPT. We all saw these videos where people ask ChatGPT crazy questions starting from how to trade stocks to what is the meaning of life. In this video, we will be talking about how to take GPT to the next level by using it to trigger APIs. In this way, you can integrate it into many use cases in your apps or even use it to build a complete smart assistant if you like. But first of all, a little bit of background. What is GPT? GPT stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer, which is a powerful large language model developed by OpenAI. It can be used to generate text that is contextually relevant and grammatically correct. It is capable of a wide range of tasks from question answering and summarization to translation and text generation. One of the limitations of GPT is that it cannot read from the internet or call APIs to access external data. This means that GPT cannot access external sources or information and must rely solely on the data that is given to it at the training time. But actually, with a little bit of prompt engineering, we can use GPT to trigger APIs. And that's what we are trying to do in this video. First of all, you will need an OpenAI account to be able to use the GPT API. Creating an account is straightforward. I will include a link to OpenAI's website in the description below. When you create an account, you get $18 as test credit to test the API, which is a very generous amount to play around with the API and test it. As text generation is relatively cheap, so basically you pay two cents to generate a 750 words using the most capable model, which is called DaVinci. Pretty cheap. Once you have your account created, go ahead and click on Playground. OpenAI's Playground is a great way to start exploring and playing around with prompts. Now let's talk about our application a little bit. The basic idea of the simple application that we are building is we want to ask GPT something, and based on that, we want it to trigger a certain API. For example, imagine we have an API that can switch the lights on and off. We want to be saying to GPT something like, I want to turn the lights on, and this should be mapped to a call to the API that switches the lights on. Of course, ChatGPT itself cannot call APIs directly. But we can use its amazing power in processing and understanding text to map that statement to a certain command for us. And in our code base, we will map this command to a certain API call. So let's go ahead and play around with the prompt that we will use in our application. So what I'm trying to do here is that um, I give a statement to ChatGPT and I want ChatGPT to understand this statement and give me back the most relevant command out of these ones that could be fitting this statement. Let's try this one. Here you go. So ChatGPT already understood that this statement or this command basically fits this statement, so it gave me back lights on. Later, in the code, as we will see, we can map these lights on to a certain API call. Now let's try a few more examples. What is the price of Bitcoin today? Let's remove this one. Submit, Bitcoin price, very smart. Um, let's say um, I have a meeting now, do not disturb. Amazing, so as you see, GPT already understands the statement that we give and really maps it perfectly to one of the commands that we have in the list. Now it's time to write some code. We are going to write the application in Python. It actually doesn't matter which language we use to build the application, as you can easily ask GPT to convert that code into any other language you are more familiar with. I believe the future of coding will be about bridging language barriers and focusing more on the building side. 
with the help of AI, everyone will be able to program in any language, even if they only know very little about it. This is actually great news for programmers as it means AI can provide assistance to increase productivity and allowing them to focus on the more interesting and challenging tasks such as debugging. Yeah, maybe debugging is not that interesting, but innovating and understanding what is happening behind the scenes and putting pieces together to build a good software. Every programmer will essentially become more of an architect, building smaller systems and stitching them together to build a bigger piece of software while using AI whenever possible to increase productivity. Anyways, let's write some code. Let's start by defining a few functions that will define the core operations of our application. So we have um, lights on function, on function. As you can see, GitHub Copilot is already giving me some suggestions here. GitHub Copilot basically is an amazing AI assistant and is also based on the GPT technology. It is basically an autocomplete on steroids. While it cannot handle everything and sometimes makes mistakes, I can easily say that it increases my productivity by up to 50%. And it is not expensive. It costs $10 per month, easily the best $10 I spend in terms of return on investment. So I really recommend it. If you have $10 to spare per month and want to save your time and increase your productivity, just get this tool. It's amazing. So anyway, it is suggesting for us just that we print lights on. Let's take this suggestion. Uh, it's already suggesting for us the lights off. Okay, we print lights off. And let's define also a function for do not disturb. Amazing, get the suggestion. And let's define another one for getting the Bitcoin price. Bitcoin price. Uh, let's leave it like that for now. Now, let's define the main function in our application. First, let's define the array of commands that we will have. So basically, the same commands that we wrote in the prompt. Um, this will be lights on think yeah I think it github copilot will do the right thing yeah now now we are trying to build a prompt that we actually built here we want to put these parts together so that we can submit this prompt to the GPT API um, and get the response so uh, we have the commands we want to build this part so we want to add like some kind of like a dash or minus or in front of the command itself let's say commands with dash we do a function that loops over the commands here and returns minus then the command um, and wraps all of that in an array and just assign it to commands with dash in front so basically what we will have at the end is all the commands that we have here with a dash in front of them next let's join all of these commands together What we have now is this part. So we already now have this part. At this point, we want to ask the user for the statement. So we'll define a statement. And this would be basically should have, yeah, what would you like to do? The input function asks basically the user in the command line what would you like to do? And the user can enter something and this will be assigned to the statement. Now let's put together the prompt. So basically this is the same prompt that we played around with here. I stitched it together 
I define prompt as a multi-line string. Uh, we have the statement and then we append the statement that we got from the user. We add a divider and then ask GPT to choose a command that matches the statement from the list below. And here is the list that we stitched together. A very important one, I added this part to the prompt, which is basically asking GPT to choose nothing if there is no match. This would be nice because um, if GPT determines that this statement doesn't fit any of the commands, then it will give us nothing and then we can actually handle that in our code. And then we uh, ask GPT to give us the chosen command. All right, let's try that out. So basically let's print the, that prompt to have a look at it. So print the prompt. And let's basically call the main function here. And let's run it. What would you like to do? I want to switch the lights off. And here, basically our prompt will look like this. Statement, I want to, to switch the lights off and then we ask GPT to match this statement to one of these commands and then we wait for the answer. Now it's time to send this prompt to GPT, basically using the API. We're gonna use the OpenAI's Python library to interact with GPT, which is a very straightforward and simple library. I will include the link to that library in the description below. But the basic idea is we all what we need to do is just to install uh, the library using this command. I already did that, so I don't need to do that again. But you just need to run this command on your machine. To use the library, we need to export the OpenAI API key. And of course, for that, we need to create this API key. If we go back to the OpenAI website, you can click on the menu on the top right, then click on View API Keys. Yeah, I want to leave. And then press on Create New Secret Key. This will create a secret key for you. You could copy it. Go back here and then we need to export this. Now we exported our key. Then let's see how to use the library. So we need to import OpenAI, OpenAI.API key. Uh, this is this is another way to use the to, to, to enter the key, but we, we don't want to use we already have the key exported in this variable. And here is the code to communicate with the API. So basically we have a completion. It is open openai.completion.create and then we, we specify the engine here uh, that we want to use. Basically we want to use text DaVinci 3 because this is the most capable model. So when it comes to understanding text, this is the best choice. And we pass in the prompt that we created in, in here. And max tokens is basically the total number of tokens in the prompt that we send and also in the response that we get from GPT. And a token is basically more or less like a word. So uh, 750 words equals to 1000 tokens. So what we are sitting here, we don't, so as our prompt is not that long and we also don't expect like a longer answer from GPT, setting max tokens to 200 is quite fine. What we do afterwards here is that we go over um, the completion that we get from GPT. So completion dot, dot choices of zero dot text. That's basically the structure that we get back from uh, GPT. And if it's lights on, then we call the lights on function. Lights off, we call the lights off and, and so on. Do not disturb, we call it do not disturb. Bitcoin price, we call Bitcoin price. And in case of nothing, we just print no command matched. Now let's give this a try. I want to switch off the lights. Here we go. So apparently it works. So we got lights, lights off as a response. And then based on that, we called lights off. So and lights off basically prints lights off. Let's try 
to do uh, what is the price of BTC today? Bitcoin price. It's working. Now let's try to integrate with a Bitcoin exchange that can return actually the actual price of Bitcoin now so that when we call the function Bitcoin price, we actually get the price of Bitcoin so that we can have the full cycle and actually call an, a, a real API. Here in the Bitcoin price, and instead of printing Bitcoin price, the URL of that we want to call is this. So we store it in a URL and then we call this endpoint using the requests to get URL. And for that, we need to import requests. So we need to go up and import requests. And afterwards, we get the response. This response is a JSON response. So we need to uh, basically load it or like parse it and read it. So we use the JSON library for that. So JSON.loads. So because we are loading string. So we, that's why we use load, load s response to text. And for that also we need to import JSON. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. Now we have the data. And um, because the data, the data structure, uh, this, this is where we can find the price of Bitcoin. So data of B, BPI, USD, and then the rate float, which will return the float rate of Bitcoin against USD. Now let's try it again. So I want to know the price of Bitcoin. Ah, now um, it doesn't show anything because um, we need to print that. So we go down back here. We just call this. So uh, we, we just call the function Bitcoin price. We just need to maybe um, let's let's just print what is being returned by this function right away. So again, I want to know the price of BTC. Here we go. This is the price of BTC. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. All the code will be available on GitHub and I will include a link to that in the description below as well. If you liked the video, I would appreciate a like and share. Subscribe if you want more of this content and if you have a question, just let me know down in the comments below. Ciao ciao.